Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all denarians on the go and in the know. Like subscribe and share to help support the channel. First article of interest for today. Al-Qazim is envoy to Saudi Arabia reveals the details of the visit in economic balance and in open market. The Prime Minister's envoy and Minister of Finance Ali Abdul Amir Alawi said on Friday that the trend is made up of three axes to develop relations with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and support the Iraqi economy. Alawi said, the aim of the visit to Saudi Arabia is to go through three axes to develop Iraq's relationship with the Saudi side, the first of which is immediate cash support to the budget. As for the second axis, it is to stimulate private Saudi companies and institutions, especially in the fields of energy and agriculture, and urge them to enter Iraqi markets through investments. The third axis is the activation of the commercial aspect. A law we added, Iraq has a plan to move towards achieving an economic and financial balance with neighboring countries, and that the Iraqi market be open to all, away from harming a specific party. He continued, the government seeks to urge Saudi companies to contribute to the reconstruction of the country, stressing that, Iraq needs immediate financial support in order for the government to fulfill its obligations towards employees. A law we stressed, Many obstacles prevented investments in Iraq, including the laws and regulations in force, the loss of the incubating structure for foreign investments and the absence of banks at a global level, as well as the unpopular accounting and legal system, as well as the unpopular land acquisition system as well. All of these obstacles prevent the Saudi investor and any investor another of the investment in other fields outside the oil fields calling for the need to have an environment conducive to investment and the replacement of those laws and address the existing problems and obstacles. And that, the administrative apparatus in Iraq is now incompatible with the requirements of the foreign investor, and it also contains major violations of corruption and interference and the way of taking decisions from parties not related to the investment work interfering for the private and partisan benefit which is one of the main obstacles that keep the foreign investor. He pointed out that, when the investor sees this environment, he will be conservative, and no matter how large the Iraqi market is, it requires encouragement from the private sector, which also suffers from these constraints. On Thursday, Prime Minister Mustafa Al-Qazemi sent Finance Minister Ali Alawi to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia on an economic mission. The Prime Minister's office stated in a statement that, Minister of Finance Dr. Ali Alawi heads to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia as an envoy from the Prime Minister to discuss bilateral relations and economic conditions in the region and encourage investment. Next article of interest. Al-Qazemi. Time to act and face challenges. Prime Minister, Mustafa Al-Qazemi, stressed that the time to act and face difficult challenges is not time to talk stressing that this government is a reaction to a popular movement and faces serious challenges and has clear and specific goals. While the Minister of Finance, Dr. Ali Alawi, went to Saudi Arabia as an envoy from the Prime Minister to discuss bilateral relations, economic conditions in the region and encourage investment, al Qazemi received two phone calls from the U.S. Energy Secretary, Dan Brolet, and another from the Iranian Vice President. Yitzhak Jahanari. Separate data for the Prime Minister's office, which was received by Al Saba, stated that Al Qazimi asserted during his presidency yesterday, Thursday, the first meeting of the Supreme Commission for Coordination between the Governorates, that the government has a set of goals, foremost of which is to save the economic situation that Iraq has never seen in its history, and we are trying to find difficult solutions that is not reflected on the citizens as well as facing the security situation and the increase in ISIS activity, as we foiled a terrorist. 4A. By the leaders of the leader who was arrested recently. The Prime Minister pointed out that the other goal is to reach early, fair and fair elections, in addition to the health challenge and the corona pandemic, calling on the Conservatives to work together to meet the challenges and focus efforts on the electricity, water and feasible investment sectors. Next article of interest. al Qazemi calls Pompeo. Preparations for a strategic dialogue between Baghdad and Washington. On Friday, 
Prime Minister Mustafa Al-Qazemi called the U.S. Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, during which they discussed the files of economic, political and security cooperation between the two countries. A statement of the Media Office of the Prime Minister, Ness, received a copy of it, May 22, 2020, that Al-Qazemi discussed with the U.S. Secretary of State the global economic crisis and its impact on oil prices and its impact on the Iraqi economy, and ways to address the repercussions of that. They also discuss preparations to start a strategic dialogue between the two countries, he added. Next article of interest. Pompeo reveals a great conversation he had with al Qazemi and the important thing he should do. The U.S. Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, revealed the points of his contact tonight with Prime Minister Mustafa al Qazemi. Pompeo said in a tweet to him on Twitter, He has spoken great with the Iraqi Prime Minister, it is very important for him to start implementing the reforms that the Iraqi people are demanding. He added that the Iraqi people deserve a government free from corruption, responsible for their needs, and committed to overcoming the economic crisis facing the country. Prime Minister Mustafa Al-Qazemi had a telephone conversation on the evening of beer with the U.S. Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, during which they discussed the files of economic, political and security cooperation between the two countries. A statement from the Prime Minister's office said Kazmi and Pompeo discussed the global economic crisis and its impact on oil prices, and the impact on the Iraqi economy and ways to address the implications of this also discuss preparations for the start of the strategic dialogue between the two countries. Next article of interest. Five files to be presented by Baghdad during its dialogue with Washington. Member of the Foreign Relations Committee in Parliament, Ayla Talibani, confirmed that five files will be raised from Baghdad during its dialogue with Washington stating that any agreement with the United States of America must maintain the balance of relations between Washington and Tehran in a way that serves the Iraqi interest. Talibani said in a press statement followed by al Sumeria News, that Iraq will present five files during his dialogue with Washington in the middle of next June, indicating that these files are the military and security coordination, the future of the American presence in Iraq the arming and training of the Iraqi army, and the economic side, as well as cultural issues, explaining that the understandings between the two countries will be military, economic and cultural. He added, the idea of a strategic dialogue between Baghdad and Washington is not new, but dates back to the period before the popular movement began in October 2019 which saw visits by high-level American officials to Iraq in their meeting with Iraqi officials, and presented them with the idea of holding joint meetings and writing a new agreement based on mutual cooperation. In several areas, in order to organize the post-salvation phase of terrorism, Talibani added, however, some political circumstances, Regional tensions and possibly differences caused the postponement of the issue that was raised again before the formation of the current government, when the American ambassador in Baghdad delivered an official message from the U.S. administration requesting the start of negotiations. She drew a member of the Parliament's Foreign Relations Committee that there are controversial points that may accompany the dialogues especially with regard to the previous decision of Parliament to remove all foreign forces from the country, stressing the difficulty of agreeing on some issues. She indicated that the Iraqi Ministry of Foreign Affairs is not able to negotiate with the Americans alone without cooperating with the relevant authorities, because the ministry is in charge of implementing the policy that is drawn in the Council of Ministers explaining that the current Iraqi policy does not bias to a state against another, but seeks to maintain balance with everybody. And she added that any agreement with the United States of America must preserve the balance of relations between Washington and Tehran in a way that serves the Iraqi interest, stressing the need not to deal with this file with affection. Next article of interest. Will the pandemic finally get central banks interested in building digital currencies? The tipping point might be nigh for digital dollars and other central bank-issued currencies done through bits and bytes. 
as politicians across the globe grapple with the pandemic's continued economic fallout and the need to get stimulus funds to individuals, corporations and even local governments with speed and security, digital delivery of those dollars is likely to gain increasing traction. As reported in this space last month, the efforts are still nascent. In the United States, the digital dollar was floated in a draft proposal of one of the early stimulus bills. In the proposal, the digital dollar would have been a balance expressed as a dollar value consisting of digital ledger entries that are recorded as liabilities in the accounts of any Federal Reserve Bank, or an electronic unit of value, ready mobile by an eligible financial institution, as determined by the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System. The effort toward digital dollars may be getting a bit of a nudge from the private sector, too. Payments giant V's recently filed a patent application with the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office that would create a digital currency underpinned by blockchain technology. The company wrote in a document that under the system, users could hold digital currency with the same denomination as the local physical currency. Example, $100 for user in America. 200 pesos for user B in Mexico and so forth, in order to perform transactions in a secure, fast and reliable way. A central entity may be a central bank which regulates a monetary supply, the company wrote. A central entity may implement a monetary policy and issue currency. A central entity may maintain exclusive rights to create or destroy currency in a region such as a nation. A central entity may be associated with the government of such a region. The visa patent application is just one wrinkle in a global effort that has seen a number of central banks focusing on digitizing their fiat. At least some of these efforts seem aimed at stanching the rise of cryptocurrencies, which proponents say can compete with traditional currencies because of their decentralized nature. Earlier this month, Tomasek Holdings a state-owned investment firm in Singapore, joined Facebook's Libra project, which has been working on digital currencies. And yet there may be a wide gulf between exploration of digital currencies and their possible deployment. In remarks made this month to the Consensus 2020 virtual conference, European Central Bank Executive Board member Eve Mersch noted that about 80% of 66 central banks queried by the Bank of International Settlements BIS, are working on central bank digital currencies, CBDC. Mersh noted that there is a lack of a concrete business case for central bank digital currencies right now, but that shouldn't stop the serious exploration of how to design them. A wholesale CBDC, restricted to a limited group of financial counterparties, would be largely business as usual, he said. However, a retail CBDC accessible to all would be a game changer. So a retail CBDC is now the ECB's main focus. Mersh added that a retail CBDC could be based on deposit accounts with the central bank. Though involving vast numbers of accounts, it would not be a particularly innovative option from a technological viewpoint. For the euro area, it would basically mean increasing the number of current deposit accounts offered from around 10,000 to between 300 million and 500 million. A CBDC of this nature would enable the central bank to register transfers between users, thereby providing protection against money laundering and other illicit uses, or those considered illicit by the rulers of the day, depending on the degree of privacy granted to users, the ECB member said. China is already in the midst of a pilot program that will trial a digital yuan with 19 firms, among them Subway, McDonald's and Starbucks. The country expects to launch the digital currency later this year or early next year. Should those efforts prove to be successful, we'd wager that the United States and other countries' efforts toward digital currencies would accelerate, and the visa patent filing might point the way toward joint public-slash-private initiatives. Add it all up, and the fate of fiat currency done electronically might be less a question of whether or even why, and more a question of simply when. Like subscribe and share to help support the channel. Don't forget to save the link to my channel on the library platform and check out the Denarian blog, Facebook and Twitter as I post important daily updates on these platforms throughout the day as well.
The links to these and other invaluable sites are in the description box below. Knowledge is power. Using that knowledge is powerful. Over and out for now, the Denarian.